So you want to get into mining, but you're uncertain about this whole mining rig building thing. This is the part where you say thank you, as we're going to be devoting this next series to walk you through one of the best ways to get one of these puppies up and running. For the first entry into this set, we'll be taking a look at how to choose these parts and how to exactly get what you need for a standard size mining rig to start churning out that sweet magical internet money. We already did a video where I covered how to build the cheapest mining rig possible. I went over the basics of what you need if you just want to drop the least amount of dough into maximizing those profits, and it came out to $222 for the base system, and then whatever you want to spend to get a single or dual pair of decent graphics cards. And while I stand by what I put in that video, there are several things that don't scale up well once you want to go for six to eight GPUs. The point of the part selection, regardless of six to eight cards or only one, is the same no matter what. Minimize upfront cost, minimize power consumption, and maximize profit. If we can achieve all of those things, we'll be well on our way to getting an epic mining rig, sucking the power juices, and yielding the proverbial gold mine. By the way, if you're looking to pick up anything for mining, you can use our Amazon affiliate code down in the description for everything we mentioned in the video. It won't cost you anything extra for getting the mining rig set up, but it'll give us a small kickback that helps us out a lot. Also, be sure to smash that like button and get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our further tech-related content, including more videos in this mining rig series. Now, in the cheapest build possible, I highly recommend it going used for a lot of the parts that you would use in a single card system. A cheap Dell Octoron off of eBay went a long way for minimizing costs and getting a small rig up and running. And while that's still a definite possibility here, the amount of parts that you're going to be finding on the used section of the interwebs that can support six or more graphics cards is going to be pretty limited. So that means for all of the recommendations in this video, I'm going to be discussing new parts and pricing with components that come with a full-fledged warranty, more or less. However, if you can find anything that I mentioned on sale in the pre-love department and you're comfortable with the risk of hand-me-down parts, then definitely go for it. Remember, minimizing costs is a large part of being successful for building a mining rig. I think the best place for us to start with building this mining rig will be to start with the components that really aren't that vital to our success and that we can get for cheap. Up first, the CPU. The processor is basically meaningless for all intents and purposes in a major mining operation. You're not going to be mining with this thing, and if you tried, your return on investment would be just way too long to justify actually using it for such purposes. Your CPU usage while mining, barring any stupid freaking Windows services that try to take over your entire computer, should be incredibly minimal. 5 to 10% CPU utilization would be rather high in this crypto hacking environment. However, that doesn't mean you can just get any old CPU and slap it into the computer. You'll need a processor that's compatible with a motherboard that has enough slots for your graphics cards. While there are a few older motherboards from a bygone era that support six GPUs, the most common set of MOBOs that support it is the B250 variety. That means you'll either need an Intel Skylake or KB Lake processor to put into the mining machine. The Celeron G3900 or G3930 are top picks for this setup. Incredibly low power usage due to only having two cores and fairly inexpensive as processors come with a price tag of typically only $40 to $45, a bit more now due to shortages, but one of these budget CPUs will be more than enough to host all of the graphics cards that you need. Now the more tech savvy amongst all of you will start questioning the choice of a Celeron due to its minuscule amounts of PCI Express lanes, and you'll be wondering whether you can get the full performance out of the graphics cards with such puny bandwidth limitations. My response is that for mining, you're not using all that much data transfer between the graphics cards and the processors to get mining done. The amount of work that a GPU does is pretty high, but while the computational power is astronomical, the amount of info that's being sent back and forth is nowhere near as intensive as playing a video game. One lane or less per GPU is perfectly fine in this scenario. On to the second part that matters very little here, the RAM. Given that we're using a Skylake processor, our RAM choice here is pretty simple. We need DDR4 and as little of it as possible. That means a single stick of four gigabytes at 2,133 megahertz is as low as you can go with DDR4 and is exactly what we need. This is probably one of the easiest parts to get used since it's so inconsequential and been around for long enough. The biggest issue is that RAM pricing is through the freaking roof right now. About $50 per four gigabyte stick is what you can expect to pay right now on Amazon, which is just absolutely stupid. But them's the breaks if you wanna buy new. Next will be the storage. There's a couple of options here, and my recommendation in the cheapest mining rig video got a little flack, but I actually still stand by it. You have the option of going with a cheap hard drive, 
a cheap solid state drive, or even a USB flash drive depending on the operating system you'll be going with. If you're running a Linux variant for mining, then a 16 gig flash drive can serve you really well and be the least expensive effective storage solution. But if you're going mainstream and running a Windows mining rig, I can't express how much it's worth splurging on a low end solid state drive. Sure, you could get a 5400 RPM drive for $10, but with how many freaking times I've had to restart my mining rig with driver setups and optimization tweaks, the speed that the SSD affords me for those reboots has saved me a butt ton of time. Maybe you're okay with slow loads and spending your time waiting for just that extra little bit of cost cutting, but this is the one area where I'm okay with breaking the rule of trying to minimize costs. Because what I'm not spending in dollar amounts, I'm spending in time waiting for Windows to flip and load, and ain't nobody got time for that. A 60 gigabyte SSD for $33 is 100% the way I would go. Not to mention that there's a little extra power savings switching to a solid state drive over a mechanical drive. The last thing that doesn't really matter, but is actually the most important of this half of the list is where you're going to store all of your components. There are two methods of thought here, convenience over cost savings. The convenience aspect is just going to Amazon and picking up one of these pre-built mining frames or heading to eBay to find out which pre-constructed ones everybody is selling. They typically require no more setup than a normal computer build would and are just simple things to add to the build. However, if your goal is as we expressed at the beginning of the video, to minimize costs, then building your own frame out of wood would be the most cost effective avenue here. Spending $10 or less at the local hardware store for just a few pieces of wood and some screws will be all that you need to have a perfect open air frame for your rig. There's plenty of guides on the internet on the dimensions that you'll need for this small DIY project and I'll leave them in the description below. Convenience versus cost savings, it's your choice, but there's really an inexpensive way of getting this done. It is now the moment that we transition to the items that really matter, the parts that make or break your mining. These are the linchpin of everything you're going to do going forward. The most convenient to figure out here is the motherboard choice. One, we've already decided the socket and generation we're going with by choosing the Celeron previously. So next is only a matter of deciding how many slots you want on the motherboard for your graphics cards. For a six card rig, there are plenty of different options available. You can get this Asus Z270, this Biostar H110, this Biostar TB250, and Gigabyte also has H110 and Z270 you can choose from. The point is, there's no shortage of motherboards that you can grab for a six card mining rig. However, when you're looking for one, be careful to make sure that even if it has one, two, three, four, five, six motherboard slots, that you check and see if they can all be used at the same time. Some motherboards have screw settings that shut off certain slots when others are in use, giving you less effective GPU slots than what the motherboard advertised. So you just wanna keep an eye out for that. For more than six cards, there are other boards out there like this ASRock H110 with 13 slots, this Biostar TB250 with 12 slots that we used in our mining rig build, and then something like this super over the top Asus B250 Mining Expert with 19 freaking PCI Express slots. From what I've heard though, everyone who has this board isn't running anywhere near 19 cards. They just like the BIOS and firmware that Asus provides with this monstrosity. The easiest way for you to make this decision is one, determine how many cards you're going to be running. Anything more than eight per rig is really uncommon for most miners as that's typically the easiest mount to get supported by power supplies and then not also run into massive driver issues. Then two, look at the individual reviews per board to find out which ones has less failure issues than others. And then three, try to find one that's not exorbitantly overpriced due to the shortages that we're going through from mining. This can actually mean that Z270 can be more of a way to go as people are buying the mining boards due to the hype but with many of the Z270s coming in at $125 to $150, they can support nearly as many cards and come without that price premium of being called mining. Next is the part that you'll need to connect the graphics cards to the motherboard. If you notice, the PCI Express slots that we're talking about on many of these motherboards are these tiny, itty bitty made for ant slots. It allows the motherboard to fit more of them space wise and since they don't transmit a butt ton of data, they're perfect for mining. But if you look at any general graphics cards, you'll see that they're a full 12 inch sub compared to the wrapper made for a chocolate chip cookie. They just don't go in. That's where these PCI Express risers come into play. Many of them look exactly like this. So they fit into the shortcake slot, connect via a USB type cable, and then have an extension that's the full wrapper for the graphics card at the end of it. Then you have the choice of powering them directly from the motherboard, bad idea, or powering them using Molex, SATA, or a six pin GPU power. 
I've heard the least amount of complaints from powering the risers directly using Molex. There's been many complaints that using SATA or using a SATA to Molex adapter can actually burn them out and then you have no GPU detected in the system. But which risers should you get? Well, this is probably one of the most difficult and risk-taking sections of the build. Unfortunately, there's no major reputable brand like MSI or ASUS that produces these things, so you're usually going with brands that you've never heard of before. And with risers, a single bad one can make it so that the entire system is completely unstable. The best thing for you to do is going to Amazon's review section or any place that compiled reviews of these things and see what the failure rate is like on one of these purchases. I know with the six that I purchased for this build, one of them was faulty. Not sure if that's average or unlucky, but I'm sitting at a 16% failure rate personally on these. And when I say faulty, the fault on the risers can appear in many different ways. The graphics card can just start up fine and then crash when the system's on the load. The graphics card could not start up and not be detected by the system at all. Or the graphics card could handle the work while mining, but have terrible hash rates due to bad communication to the motherboard. A faulty riser manifests in many different ways, but is likely one of the key issues that you're going to experience while building the rig. Just make sure you do your research on which ones you're picking it up as it's far too difficult for me to recommend any particular brand. We're now at the last part of the part selection. Hooray! Celebrate good times, come on. No, but for real, this is the most exciting part of building the mining rig, determining what graphics cards you wanna use. Also, power supply selection is super integral to this process because which and how many GPUs you decide to go with will determine the wattage and setup that you need for your power supply. GPU selection is probably one of the hardest parts of building the mining rig because there's so many different cards all capable of mining so many different currencies and have profitability rates that completely fluctuate from time to time. The graphics cards are where you're going to be making all of your money. So choosing the right ones at a good price to help maximize the long-term profits is the goal. The cards that are the best buys right now might not be that way next week when their profitable coin goes a different direction. The best thing for you to do is to go to whattomine.com and type in the amount of each graphics cards that you're thinking and it'll give you the best indication of what their current profitability is. The biggest issue I have with choosing graphics cards for a mining rig is that current profitability does not mean future profitability. And just because the 1050 Ti is a great buy right now with minor Tracer coin, doesn't mean that Tracer coin is going to hold up these levels long enough for you to pay off the rig. But let's say for argument's sake, you went with the six RX 580s because that's what I have in this rig and that's gonna be easiest for me to talk about. Six RX 580 eight gig cards will run you about $2,640 for all of the cards. Their profitability after electricity costs of 10 cents per kilowatt hour come to $21.15 per day. That means all six cards can pay themselves off in 124 days. However, we still need to find a power supply to run all of these puppies. The calculations that you'll wanna do is to multiply the average power consumption of a single card with the number of cards you have. The average power consumption of each RX 580 out of the box is roughly 180 watts, which means we'll need 1,080 watts for all of the graphics cards alone in the system. Once we add the processor's power consumption, the riser's power consumption, the SSD and the fans, then we're sitting at 1,250 watts from the wall. However, one of the nice things about mining Ethereum with AMD cards is that the core clock and the power that the cards use can be greatly reduced without affecting the hash rate. In total, after all of my tweaks and undervolting, which I'll be covering in upcoming parts of the video series, I could get this entire system down to 875 watts from the wall, meaning I could add one to two more cards on this power supply without exceeding the power limitations. However, power limits aren't the only things that you have to look out for when buying a power supply. One of the things that you'll need to determine is how many PCI Express connectors are you going to need for running the cards in total. We also have to look at the efficiency rating on the power supply. Once you start into getting pulling this much power, having an 80 plus platinum PSU means major electric savings over taking an 80 plus bronze efficiency. So summing up, keys to choosing a power supply for your mining rig. Figure out how many watts each card is going to take, either at stock or after optimizations, if you want to go that route. Then multiply them across the number of cards you're going to be putting in the system. And then figure out how many connectors the PSU has and what the efficiency rating is so you know what you're going to be getting with the system. And if you don't want to spring for a single high wattage PSU, but instead want to use one that you have around and add another one onto it, there's plenty of adapters to make that happen. 
Combining two 850 watt power supplies, it can serve the same purpose as the 1200 watt with only an adapter and extra space needed to store the second power supply. All right, this video is already freaking long enough as it is. So here's the quick TLDW. CPU, RAM, storage, and case are the most inconsequential for a mining rig build. Motherboards, risers, graphics cards, and power supplies are all important, and what you get and how you get them is determined by what you want and how much cash you have on hand. For this six-card RX 580 rig that Wootware sponsored, we're looking at a raw cost of $2,610 for the graphics cards, $300 for the power supply, $50 for the risers, $47 for the CPU, $348 for the motherboard, $50 for the RAM, $45 for the solid state drive, and another $45 for the frame. Based on the $21 a day that this rig brings in, the total cost of the $3,435 for the system can be paid off in 162 days if we stay at the same profitability levels. For South African pricing, the total breaks down to 41,454 Rand with 32,400 going in the graphics card, 3,449 for the power supply, 749 for the CPU, 1,999 for the motherboard, 1,068 for the risers, 789 for the RAM, 800 for the solid state drive, and 650 for the chassis. So if I were to have purchased this entire system for Wootware myself, I'd be looking to pay it off in 158 days. What? I hear you saying? How can the South African payoff be shorter? Well, my friends, the key here is that the shortage of parts in South Africa hasn't hit too much and the prices aren't super jacked up like they are in the US for a few of these different points. So yeah, score one South Africa. But the general take about it is that in about 160 days at current profitability, you could pay off a nearly $3,500 computer. And if the rates hold true, you would make another $3,500 before the end of 2018. I'm not sure there's any other investment that pays you back in well under a year. However, major caveat as I put in all of my mining videos, the cost of the coins could plummet, the bubble could burst, and you could be left with a system that you have to sell off to gamers for a fraction of the price. So as always, invest wisely, don't spend more than you can afford to lose, and definitely make sure you know what you're getting into before you start mining. But I hope that this video has helped you out with figuring out part selections for your mining rig moving forward. We'll be having more videos coming up on the actual build process and troubleshooting, so be sure to smash that like button if this one was helpful for you and you want to see more, and then get subscribed and make sure you get notified when the next video drops. Also, I want to give a huge, mega, massive shout out to WeWare for fronting the cost for this entire mining rig. Them sponsoring the parts is what has allowed us to take this deep dive into the mining world. So if you're in South Africa and you're looking to pick up parts for your mining rig or your gaming rig system, Wootware should be your go-to store. With tremendous selection, some really dope pricing as we could see from the payoff period on the rig to absolutely world-class customer service, shopping at Wootware will be the shopping experience you've always dreamed about. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootware.co.za to woot up your life. The link will be in the video description. And if you're in the US and you can't buy for Wootware, sorry, you can again use our Amazon affiliate code to pick up any and all of your mining or gaming needs. Be sure to let me know what you thought of today's video, either down in the comments or over on Twitter, I am at UF Disciple. Anyways, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.